This is a Bokoblin. This is Link as a Bokoblin. And we're gonna see if we can beat all of Tears of the Kingdom as just a Bokoblin. The first order of business, though, before we become the godly Link Goblin, we needed to cut ties with Zelda. Goodbye, Zelda. See you never. We're a Bokoblin. We don't care about Zelda. So to complete our transformation, we needed to blitz through the Sky Island tutorial and rush our way to get the almighty Bokoblin helm. So about an hour later, we were finally on our way down to Hyrule and we found our first brethren. I'm not full on Bokoblin yet. Boom. Get away from me. Oh, give me those fruits. So now we can finally use something. I see they have apples. You didn't have any weapons? Sorry, brother. <laughs> so we were fine using the fire fruit to kill the first one to get us started, as the goblins use them all the time. But from here forward, we can only use items and deal damage with what we find from our slain goblin brothers. And a bit later, we found our first mini group of goblins, and we ambushed them all for the loot. And goblins use some diverse weapons here. We got our first rusty shield, a boko bow, and then some wooden sticks, and even some horns. With the wooden sticks that they get gave us. We use their horns. Anything we get from the Bokoblins, we can use. So we uh, kept on killing them here because you know how the saying goes. To become a Bokoblin, you have to slay some Bokoblins first and eat them, obviously. This camp was nice. It had a rusty halberd for us, a sword. So we were getting strong fast as we were making our way to the almighty Bokoblin helm. Then we found our first blue brother. So we tried to actually give him a hand taking out this villager. Yeah, yeah. I was trying to help you, man. And we didn't take kindly that as we were just trying to help him out. So we took our revenge savagely with fire. A bit later, we found Colton, who oddly enough was trying to transform as well. So we got our first bubble gem for him quick, handed it over, and we finally got the problem mask. The ultimate item is ours. Our final form. We got a lot of work to do though, man. And yes, a lot of work indeed. Because now in addition to rule one, here are some of the others for this challenge. Rule two, we can only wear the problem mask and never take it off. Rule three is we can only travel on foot, a horse, or a battle talus. And you may be thinking, a battle talus? Yes, more on that way later in the video. But to make this faster, we wasted no time and snuck up on our first horse and then named it Boko. And while we're fighting this next mob, let me go over the other rules of this video. Rule number four, I can only eat what a Bokoblin needs. This means various fruits and meats we see them eat. Rule five, I must collect all five of the sages. Rule six is I must beat five different mini bosses like Lionels, battle taluses, Gleox, and more. Rule seven is defeat Ganon. Rule number eight, is do not save Zelda to become God Wakoblin ruler of Hyrule. And number nine, duplication glitches are allowed. The big boy is down, the one that hated us. I can't use his items though. But beating this mob was nice as we got an armored shield added to our inventory and a better bow. And right after that, we stumbled upon our first mini boss that we could take on, a battle talus. And sadly, we couldn't tame this one. Oh, he's almost done. Oh, oh, ooh, ooh, that one hurt. Should be the last one. Yes, t -Bago. You should have let me ridden you, Battle Talus, but no. But again, since I'm becoming a God Bokoblin and not just a regular puny Bokoblin, here's what makes the God Bokoblin special. He can use hand abilities, he can use blessings, and the paraglider. Trust me, this challenge is going to be hard enough even with those. So now we are right to getting the paraglider, and on our way, we were getting disrespected by Pira. Dude, maybe show a little restraint. I'm the master Bokoblin. What do you want me to do? I'm proud. And we took that personal. So we took out our frustration on our friends with some TNT. Bro, that was just everyone. So much peacefuler now in here. <laughs> Surprisingly, that gave us a ton of good weapons like a soldier's broadsword, a blue book goblin horns, and more. But as a goblin goblin, we need more health as we wanted to gear up for the depths. So we did some shrines and got a heart container. And we needed some meals to survive as well. But goblins only use open flames to cook. So that is how the only way we can make food as well. But goblins only cook by the fire. So we can only cook by throwing stuff near the fire. So this is part of the meals that we can eat. Jeez, that's going to take forever to cook. <laughs> and now we headed to the depths and ended up acquiring bomb flowers at the Bokoblin camps, which is so OP. And this helped us get further in the depths, getting the auto build ability for our battle talus later on. So we destroyed Master Koga. And then on our way to the first temple, we found another mini bot to beast, the Henox. And since we're Bokoblin, we like to play very dirty. And you already know we went for those nut shots. Get out of here, boy. Okay, I'm not gonna lie. I remember this guy being a lot stronger because we're Gobble Goblin. After we continued beating every Goblin mob in sight to be able to get enough weapons on our way to the Wind Temple. But we had our first major problem in this challenge. This whole region is in a freezing cold temperature. So we're gonna take damage just running around. And to make it worse, I didn't realize you couldn't cook spicy peppers in an open flame. They just get toasted and they do not give a cold resistance like that. And eating them alone gives you no cold resistance either. So basically we needed a ton of meat 
meat eat every second just to survive this cold weather. So we got to hunting every deer and animal in sight. <clears throat> I mean, just duping it. It took a while, but now we had tons of food to at least survive the cold until we tried to dupe some fire fruits. No way that killed me. I don't even know what happened. So yeah, that sucked as that wasted time as we had to do it all over a good, but then we finally cooked our meat and then we built the totally 100% safest bridge you'll ever see to Rito Village and then did another shrine for the stamina vessel. And then we had an epic find that Bokoblins use ice fruits here. And this was big as now I could freeze enemies. I'm so pumped for that. Ice fruits. This is perfect because now I can actually freeze them. Now here we found some stronger weapons Bokoblins were using, which was nice. We graced Tulin and all of Rito with God Bokoblins presence and we had to help him out a bit. They're carrying my brothers and he's got a nice sword I want. Oh, we got that flurry rush. Let's go. Give me that sword, bro. I am. You need to just get one shot. <laughs> <laughs> I hit a falcon bow, dude. We started making our way up to the wind temple. We also beat our third mini boss along the way, a flux construct, which was fairly easy. But we had a hard time climbing in the same areas as we could not use Zonai devices unless they were just laying around in the map and there weren't any. But luckily we had a shield with TNT on it and I hoped it was enough here. Let's go, dude. That's how we do it, man. Can't use Zonai? No problem. Then before long, we were finally at the wind temple and started completing it. And then we had one of the dumbest deaths so far. I know. Dude, the depth perception was so off right there. That's so lame, man. At this point, we were having to eat meat literally every two seconds just to live, and it was getting annoying. But we were finally at the boss fight, and I wanted to make a deal with you guys. If we beat this without using a single weapon, you better subscribe. But now, to be honest, beating Colgara without weapons is actually super easy. You just fly around, dodging stuff, and wait for it to shoot its back hair at you, and then you just dive through the openings a few times. Just don't pay attention and uh, don't get eaten like I did. Oh, God. Dude, I was literally reading chat. <laughs> Never happened. There we go, dude. See, you just need to go through. The easiest boss fight done. I'm just happy we got another heart container and Tulin to help us fight a little. God Goblin is the ruler of Rito Village. With our spoils of victory, we slayed many more deer for meat. But ironically, right after that, we saw some Bokoblins actually eating cooked prime meat. So we acquired some of our own, which actually gives twice the hearts than just the regular meat. So it helps so much. But we'll hunt for that later on. At this point, we decided to do the water temple next. And on our way, we found our Bokoblin horse that we thought died a long time ago. Uh, so welcome back, Boko. But he literally got stuck like everywhere. So we just ditched him and ended up walking as if he was becoming faster. And a bit later, we made a huge discovery that would help out so much in this challenge. We found a Bokoblin with choo-choo jellies. And this was a big discovery discovered because one, two choo jellies can transform into whatever element we need at the time, like fire, water, and ice. And two, we needed them to clean all of the sludge in Zora's domain. Otherwise we would have got stuck here, but eventually we made our way to help Sidon cleaning the sludge left and right. And now we did acquire Zora's armor here with the king skill just to complete this quest line. But what did suck is noble goblins were around here like stock up on weapons and I only had one bow left that we didn't want to break. So we literally had to throw all of our jellies by hand, but we made quick work of the sludge like use Zora armor to just get to the water water temple, but immediately took off that disgraced armor once we could, as Gob Goblin prefers to be in his undies at all times. And then now we took in the boss, but I was actually scared here as my first ever playthrough I faced him, I died like 30 times. So I hope this time as Gob Goblin was going to be different, and oh boy it was. It's going to be tough to beat him at the end. Yeah, this one's tough. My man's just swimming around, bro. Lead the choo-choo jelly. Take him out before he can go anywhere to do it. Wow, that was a lot easier than I thought, dude. The reason why I had to throw everything is I didn't want to break my bow. So beating him gave another heart and our book Hoblin Rain was growing across the land. Hail me, my people of Zora. As for God, Book Hoblin is here to rule your city now. Okay, maybe this was starting to get to my head a bit, but who cares? We will Zora at mine as we got our vow side on and immediately set out to the next stage. And along the way, we found an Octruck to repair our only bow. But we were in desperate need of finding some Bokoblins to stock back up on weapons. But man, they are not many of them in this mountains. So we got all the way to Goron City, found Yunobu, and started helping him to take his mask off. But it was scorching heat here, so our weapons were burning. We were literally on fire. And our high IQ gobble goblin brain thought it was a good idea to throw a bomb flower. We did die. <laughs> But eventually, we finally freed Inobu, and at long last, we found one of my brothers and destroyed them. And this Bokoblin actually had a soldier shield. And this was a big upgrade as we needed metal weapons that wouldn't burn. So we made our way on up into the mountains, ran into a Morgia, the most cool looking but weakest boss ever. And luckily, there was this plane right over here. And then we got a nice snipe on the boss here. This stuff I'm fine using because it's not in my inventory and it's just there. It's literally on the ground. Oh, get sniped, bro. <laughs> 
<laughs> Perfect. After that, we dropped right into the volcano and stupidly died once. But here is where the massive issue began. We were constantly being on fire and it kills you super fast. But we're in the clear as Sidon's bubble was coming in so clutch is after it runs out, it still leaves you dripping for a long time. So we continue surviving with that until our big brain tried a bomb flower once again. Oh no, God, please, no. So yeah, but at least one of my brothers had a strong construct bow that we found, which is big as we find those all the time, and it was heat resistant. And then we got to the fire temple, but found out as soon as I activated the fire temple, I could not summon Sidon anymore, which sucks so bad. And I literally had to eat every two seconds again. Okay, this is gonna suck. Oh God. I literally lose health so freaking fast, man. Until we had a big brain moment here and remembered we had the MVP of the run still, the choo-choo jellies. So we just tossed them at our feet and it gave us that drip effect again. Now, it wasn't as long as a drip effect as Sidon's bubble, but it will do. So we painstakingly went down and hunted all the two gels we could find. And while we were at it, we also hunted some prime meat and cooked it right before our very own eyes. At this point, even though we had choo-choo jellies to cool us, due to some like technical issues, I was not able to hear the game sound. So a lot of time I didn't know when I was low HP. So we actually burned to death a lot here. Freaking die, dude. I have no game sound. And it frustratingly happened a lot more times. But eventually we made it to the boss fight and aside from getting flung all the way to next month, he took him down super easy. Like, he's not hard. It's just the RNG when he's on the ceiling of hitting him. I don't know how to aim it properly. Now, once again, Gobble Coven's reign spread to Goron City, so we cashed in and got some stamina vessels to do a neat little shortcut to get to the next stage. So we went back to right where it all began. Conveniently, this wing sits right here in the overworld. So we just glided over to the storm cloud and you go right to where the shrine where Miniru's head is. But I forgot one step. We did not have enough hearts to open this door. Oh, so we had to go back to the bargainer statue to switch our stamina to get 10 hearts, open the door, and now got Miniru's mask. But since we couldn't build like a hover bike or anything, we had to walk this thing all all the way through the mountains, which took forever. But on the way, we found a big discovery. We found a black book album, which meant stronger weapons for us. And then Minero's mask actually chipped in fighting it here as well. Ooh, Minero gets a hit in there. What up? Black book goblin horn is ours. Then we got to assembling Minero like a Exodia. We got our head done, the left leg done, and then found a black boss book goblin. And it was massive as this horn is super strong. So we drawn him to death. And so we added his horn to our weapons and our power was growing fast now. After that, we found the last three pieces of our Exodia, and the God Bokoblin had a new nice ride. God Bokoblin can ride a freaking Minoru, dude. Let's go. So we made our way to the Spear Temple, and during the boss fight, we did die twice learning the patterns. But once we got them down, it was hit after hit, and it was almost dead already. That's not even hard. I just didn't know. God Bokoblin, ruler of the depths. At this point now, we've conquered so much land, and to finish this challenge, all we really had to do was to get the last sage, beat two more mini bosses, build our real battle talus, find silver Bokoblins, and then take take over the world. So for the final arc, we were making our way to Gerudo Town, and on the way, we took on a flame Gleok mini boss, and it was quite hard. All right, Gleok time. Let's go, dude. Ah! No, are you serious? I literally hit him. I'm gonna be free with you guys. Honestly, I thought this was gonna be super easy as I've slayed so many Gleoks before, but as a Coblin, I cannot use key side balls to snipe it from afar or zone out devices to jump in the air. So this made it much more difficult, and it did not help that I killed myself ah! again with bomb flowers. I've died four times times to my own freaking bomb flowers this run and the deaths continued for the next 30 minutes here until we finally got smart we started taking our time and then we used the ledges to bullet time snipe him and then when we used super hype in the air we found a way to get up there dead dead i thought i was dead oh my god he's right here bro i can't even see his face this might be it Final freaking leave, man. Let's go. Flame Gleok mini boss defeated. The sad part is we can't use any of this. So here we headed to Gerudo Town and we found a massive discovery for us again. Yes! Gerudo Bow. Why are they guarding this one for the Bokoblins? Oh, that would have been so helpful versus the freaking Gleok, bro. We also found Bokoblins using shock fruit and gourmet meat, which has helped a lot. Then we got to Gerudo Town a bit later and then we noticed we still weren't able to summon Sidon here and we figured out he was completely completely glitched out. That's why it doesn't work. It's not because I opened the fire temple. It's because it's just glitched. So we had to fix this as this bubble ability is incredible versus the heat and as a defensive shield. So we went to go see him to make sure he was still in the game.
game. And he was, but it didn't help. And then we tried a few more things and it still wasn't working. And the last thing I could think of was just resetting our game. And guess what? It worked. Hello. Yes. Now back to another issue as we save Gerudo Town again with the MVP of the Chuchu Jellies, all while being butt naked. But now the Gerudo have forsaken Gobble Goblin and put us in jail for not wearing clothes. Do they not fear the wrath of Gobble Goblin? <laughs> Sorry, I got carried away again. <laughs> so yeah, we couldn't progress without some clothes. And I was kind of sort of stumped, but Chad had an amazing idea to use the Yiga armor because it's a red. So we ventured over some Yiga hideouts, destroyed the guards, got the Yiga armor and the tights quick, and it actually looked really good. Now Gerudo finally let us back in to defend the city, connected the light triangle, entered the lightning temple, did the light puzzle, and now it was time to take on Queen Gibdo. And honestly, we struggled a bit at the start as we literally kept getting run into, but eventually we got it down and conquered Queen Gibdo and Gerudo Town and the, all the villagers were bowing to me. Also, it was kind of cool having the whole Sage crew out now, and we just had to power up a little bit before taking on our last mini boss, Lionel, making our super cool battle talus, and then doing the Ganon fights. We explored a little bit and found these random goblins that had a freaking soldier sealed, topaz, gnarled sticks from the camps, so we were getting super strong here. We also found a really cool bone horse that was above ground, but sadly we couldn't register it, so we continued on, made it to Lurlin Village, and then the long wait was over. We finally found the coveted, elusive, so Silver Bokoblin. So we killed it. 45. Our most powerful form so far. And here we were rolling and we beat more Silver Bokoblin Brothers. Found a strong gnarled stick, which put us over the 50 damage barrier, which helped Gobble Goblin conquer the poor town of Lurlin. Then we stumbled upon our last mini boss fight. An all powerful Lionel. Kind of nervous. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> I was not prepared for that strike. Wait, how is that not a crit hit, by the way? That legit hit him in the face. Wait, what? No freaking way. Get out of here, get parried, fool, and now you're done. What kind of attack is that? <laughs> oh, <laughs> let's go. Sage is coming in clutch, taking him out. Because a little while to get used to the attack patterns of the Lionels again. But now all of our mini bosses that we need to were defeated. It was time to build our very own battle talus. To do that, we had to find wheels that were already on the map. And thank goodness I remembered this spot here. And now we just needed to gather rocks, big rocks, small rocks, fallen rocks. And I never knew I could get more excited about freaking rocks right here. <gasps> let's go. Yeah. Found a big one. But a bit later, we had the most massive rock collection in all of Hyrule. Building this thing actually took a while as we tried many different iterations for it to actually be functional but oh my gosh once it was done it was a thing of beauty totally feasible it even has perfect maneuverability look at this Get sniped, bro. It's the power of the battle talus. After 22 hours, we completed everything we had to do, and it was time to take on Ganondorf. So to prepare, we farmed a lot of topaz and silver goblin horns, got a final heart container, got more weapon slots, and headed to underneath the castle. While we were working our way to Ganon, we tried our best not to break our hearts, as a massive issue for this fight since I'm a goblin is I cannot use Sundalines to repair my hearts, as I had never found any goblins that used them or had any. So basically, this is master mode, but the worst part is, it wasn't enemies killing me, it wasn't Gloom, it was my own freaking electricity shots. And it happened not once, not twice, but four flipping times. And I blame it was because I was tired, okay? But eventually we defeated the army, got a nice five piece on the Phantom Ganons. Like, this was really satisfying right here. You ain't got nothing on me, bro. And then we made it to Ganondorf, and we actually did a good job dodging and flurry rushing him on his first stage right away. But then you'll never guess how we died to the Demon King form. Again? We were doing so well. And honestly, after that, it was our downfall. We died and died and died to stage one Ganon for an hour more now. But again, this was because we had to be perfect. We couldn't get hit at all because we couldn't recover our hearts. We had no fairies. But eventually, we learned every single one of his patterns perfectly. And I was getting pretty pumped. I have to be ready for his attack. Like, instantly like that let's go we beat that first stage easy now but now it was time to take on the final stage again but since gobble goblin learned every single move they are like the exact same on this stage as well so we beat this one easy as well got him had to be ready for an attack right away yes halfway i think first time getting him to halfway now we have to do double flurry rushes this is the tough part bro yes 
Let's go. Got it. Let's go. Let's go, cool, bro. Get out of here, freaking Gandorf. On the hardest dodge. So now he turns into a dragon because he's a sore loser. And now here the game actually gave us a master sword, but you already know we can't use it. And then we had to tell Zelda what's up here. Ah, shut up, Zelda. We ain't saving you, fool. So as we were taking on Dragonorf here, I was worried we may not have enough weapons as all of them were starting to break one after the other. Luckily, though, we barely had enough to get through. And after flying around a bit more, all of Hyrule was about to be God Bacobbins once and for all. Three, two, one. Zero, dude, we are God Bacobbin taking over all of the freaking Hyrule in Zelda universe. Let's go. Let's freaking go, bro. Taking my Bacobbin mask. That's low. He was on my pants, though. For that, Zelda, you are not being saved today, fool. Goodbye, Zelda. See you never. Bye, have a great time. <laughs> Subscribe.